Okay, so if you've landed on this video, you're probably interested in building a business and an income through publishing books on Amazon KDP, but maybe you don't know where to start and maybe the information out there has been a little bit too overwhelming or perhaps your recent success with KDP has been pretty poor. So in today's video, I'm gonna go over the top three most important things that you need to know about Amazon KDP to be successful in 2023 and the top three things that you must avoid to save yourself a lifetime of headaches. So my name is Chris, that's me. I've been self-publishing through Amazon KDP for around 10 years. I'm here to share that experience with you and share the reality of what actually works and what is worth your time. I do tend to show off some of my books that I've had made and published, like this one and this one, so that you know what I talk about is exactly what I'm doing myself. So if you like the video, leave a like. If you don't, leave a dislike. But either way, let's get into this video. So let's start with the top three things that you must know in order to be successful with KDP going into 2000. And 23. So success tip number one is visibility on Amazon. Now this is something that is shockingly never really spoken about and that's why this is first here because it's pretty much everything and that is actually being found on Amazon because you can have the best book that's ever been created and still make no sales if you aren't being found. Getting those eyeballs onto your book is pretty much everything which means you have to do one of two things. And that is to either niche your book down to the point where you have less competition and therefore get found easier, or you spend money on advertising your book and get found that way. So my preferred way of doing things here is to niche down and to also run ad campaigns. Okay, so this is the most potent combination for getting views to your books because it's gonna allow you to get good visibility without having to spend too much money on advertising. So think of things this way to make it easier. Imagine, the first page of the search term that you were looking for was the only page that existed and everything else after that just got deleted. Now, just imagine how many people are up uploading books that are somewhat related to that search term. It's gonna be a lot, as in a ridiculous amount, so we can't all get onto that first page. So the only way at this point to get to that first page is to start running advertising campaigns to get there. So the more books that exist like yours, the more money that you're gonna to have to spend to get onto the first page, which could be a lot of money. Now imagine reducing that competition by niching down to a more specific audience. And I'm gonna give an example in just a second. So now there's gonna be naturally less competition. And when it comes to your visibility, you might be lucky enough to get found without having to spend any money on advertising. Okay, so let's come over to Amazon and use one of my books as an example here when it comes to the importance of visibility and what you can do to increase your chances of being found on the front page. So back in October, I created a word search. Now, if I was creating just a generic word search like this, the chances of me getting found organically on the front page are pretty slim because the competition is going to be incredibly high. So what I wanted to do here was to niche down to a more specific audience to give myself a better chance of being found. So what I did was to niche down to a Christmas word search for adults. Okay, so once we niche down, like this, we're gonna be naturally reducing the amount of competition. Now, that doesn't mean that there's no competition because there is still a lot of competition for this search term for this type of book, Christmas Word Search for Adults. However, if we scroll down here, we can see my book here is still ranked on the first page, okay? So what I was doing here was niching down Christmas Word Search for Adults and then also running ad campaigns to this book. Now, when it comes to running ad campaigns, I think I spent around $20 just to get this book ranked onto the front page. Whereas if I was trying to get ranked for a more broader term like word search, it probably cost me a lot more money to get ranked on the first page. Okay, so that's why this combination of niching down and running ads to your book is so powerful. So the point that I'm trying to make here is that if I'd uploaded just a generic word search and not thought about where it's actually gonna end up on Amazon, the chances of me making sales from that would have been pretty slim because I'm just relying on luck. However, what I've done here is to actually niche down to a more specific audience and then also give it that boost from advertising campaigns to get it ranked onto the first page. So that's the importance of visibility and you really, really need to think about where your book is gonna end up before you hit that publish button. So success tip number two is to go where money is being spent. So this is a pretty debated topic at times. Should you produce books in areas that you feel passionate about or should you produce in areas that are proven to be selling? Now, in my opinion, put it this way, if you want to save time experimenting and reduce the risk of nothing coming from your projects, then you should go where money is being spent. 
Now, of course, to establish that, this comes down to doing your research to determine which type of books are actually selling on Amazon. If you can find books that are selling well, that you are somewhat interested in or indeed passionate about, then that's even better, which is why I tend to focus a lot of my efforts at the moment on producing coloring books because I know that there is a demand for that type of book, plus I enjoy creating them, plus I actually enjoy doing them myself sometimes. So it's important that you understand that if you have a good idea in mind for a book, it doesn't necessarily mean that customers on Amazon share the same passion for it that you do. Now, saying that, I feel like getting creative and taking risks could result in tapping into a less competitive area of Amazon if you get it right. And that's something I think maybe you can experiment with in the future. But if you're just starting out, then most definitely go where money is being proven to be spent. So how do we establish the niche that we're interested in producing books in actually has traffic and money going through it? So you can do all this research yourself on Amazon very quickly to determine whether a niche has got buyer traffic going to it. Okay, you don't need to buy any fancy software to do this. You can do this all yourself on Amazon. Okay, so let me show you really quickly how you can establish whether a niche has got buyer traffic going to it or not. So one of the best tools that you can download, which is also free to increase the speed in which you do your niche research is called DS Amazon Quick View. Now, what that's gonna do is display the BSR of each book underneath the thumbnail of the book on the front page. So instead of having to go into each book listing individually, it's gonna show them all on the front page here. Now, the importance of the BSR is that the lower the number is, the more sales that book is making. So a book that has a ranking of 30,000 here, it's going to be making more sales than a book that has 106,000 as its BSR. So what we want to do to establish that this niche in general, the cat coloring book for adults, as I've done as the example here, to establish that there's buyer traffic going to it, we want to make sure that these BSRs are consistently low across the first page, okay? So we're going to get some anomalies here where we have like a rank a million or something like that. But what we want to do is just make sure that most of these books have a decent ranking. So I don't have a set criteria when it comes to these numbers, but I do like to see that most books are under 100,000 and that some of them are under 5,000 as well, okay? So this should be enough to tell us that there is lots of buyer traffic going to this niche. So for example here, we have quite a few that are under 100,000 as we can see here. And we also have a few that are under 10,000 as we can see here. So 5,000, 1,800 and 8,000 here. And again, plenty of books here that are under 100,000 as well. So that means there's pretty much definitely a demand for these type of books. So with success tip number one, which is understanding the importance of visibility on Amazon paired with success tip number two, which is going where money is being spent, you're already gonna be miles ahead of most independent publishers. Now, moving on to success tip number three, which might not seem important, but I can promise you it is, and that's understanding the reality of Amazon KDP. So there's a huge problem going on at the moment, and it's been going on for years, and that is the whole make money online scene. It's become crazy, it's packed full of misinformation, and it's quite honestly embarrassing. So we tend to have, especially with KDP, we tend to have two extreme perspectives. The first being is that it's dead and it's saturated to the point where new publishers can't make any money. The other extreme being that it's so easy you can make 20,000 a month just from uploading a few books onto the platform. Now both are complete trash and the reality lies pretty much in the middle. And of course it's gonna vary from person to person. So to be successful with KDP or pretty much any online pursuit is that you're going to have to give this time and effort. The other reality here is that you're going to need to invest something, be that your time or your money, ideally both. If you don't have much money to put into this, then you're going to be doing everything yourself, which means it's going to take you a longer time to see results. Whereas if you have money to invest into your books, then you're going to be shortening the type of time it takes to produce them. Thus, success is going to come quicker and you will fail. There's no doubt 100% that you're going to fail at something along the way. You're going to make books that won't sell, but you should take massive comfort when it comes to failing because it's perfectly normal and it's absolutely vital that you fail in order to learn and actually progress with this business model. So this isn't going to be for everyone because it is hard. But for perspective, it's probably gonna be one of the best and easiest ways to make money online. And the problem here is that if you don't understand the reality of earning money online and through KDP specifically, then you're much more likely to quit too soon before you even really got going.
Okay, so let's move on to the top three things that you need to avoid when publishing in 2023. So the number one thing to avoid, in my opinion, is neglecting your book cover. So this is a huge one because people do 100% judge a book by its cover. And what we find here is that people don't put enough effort into creating their book cover or they try to make a book cover themselves when they aren't good at that. So let me save you a lot of time with this tip here. And that is, if you don't have any background in graphic design and you aren't willing to learn it, hire someone to do it for you. A simple check of somewhere like fiverr.com should help you find someone to do this for you. That being said, take your time with it. If you need to redesign it until it looks great, then obsess with it until it does. If you need to ask the person you've hired to make revisions, then ask them for that. If you need to pay them a little bit more money, then pay them a bit more money. You might even need to start from scratch or to hire someone else. The worst thing that you can do for your book after you've taken the time to research it, the time to create the interior for it, and even if you plan on running ads to this book, you need to do it justice by creating a great looking book cover. So everything on Amazon, the type of books Amazon wants to show are the books that are converting well. And that all starts with your book cover. You need to get them onto your listing so that they actually go ahead and press the buy button. And like I say, that starts with having an absolute killer book cover. So a really easy way to get ideas as to how to create a quality book cover in your niche is to take a look at what is selling already on Amazon. So let me give you an example with another one of my books here. So back in July of 2022, I started creating this addition and subtraction workbook. Now this book didn't go live until August of 2022, I don't think, but since then it's had 298 sales as we can see here, and it continues to make sales pretty much every single month. Now, one of the reasons that this book is making sales is because it's the book cover is appealing to the audience that are searching for these type of books, okay? So what you can do with whatever type of niche that you're interested in producing books in is just to see what the competition is doing for books that are also selling well, okay? So there's a big difference between copying and taking inspiration. We want to take inspiration from other books that are selling well. So for example, I think I came across to this one here and checked out the elements that were working for this person. So for example, they have bold text, they have the grades on it, they have a pretty punchy looking um, color combination going on here. And they also have images from their interior on the front cover as well. Okay, so what you can see here is that I came up with something completely unique. Um, the idea, I came up with the ideas and then I passed that information on to the person I hired from Fiverr.com who went ahead and produced this book. And I said to them, you know, the first version that they came back with, I wasn't happy with. So I said to them, you know, let's change this, this, and this. And ultimately we came back with this book cover here. Okay, so I was very picky about what they made and I did my research first and that's why this book continued to sell. So that moves me on to the second thing that I think you should avoid and that is getting your publishing business in reverse. So what does that mean exactly? It means prioritizing the hyped up side of KDP that actually doesn't make as much difference as you think it might do. And I'm talking about things like keywords, subtitles, backend keywords, ad strategies, external marketing efforts, and things like that. And while I'm not saying that these things don't matter, what I'm saying is that a lot of people now get caught into the hype of thinking that a niche or a keyword is what is gonna make their book sell. So the reality is that researching your target audience and delivering what they're looking for and being found on Amazon is much more important in the long run. So when you create a killer, awesome product, you're gonna get five star reviews from that and your conversions are gonna increase from that. And from that, Amazon is gonna push, push and promote your product better, which means you're gonna make money from it for a much longer period of time. So pairing this alongside a niche that has got buyer traffic going to it, you're gonna be massively increasing your chances of making sales. And what's great about taking such an approach is that you won't have to worry about missing out on trends or hot keywords or hot niche videos or whatever the next shiny object is gonna be because high quality books will always make their way to the top when they're produced and marketed correctly, which leads me on perfectly to the third thing that I think you should possibly avoid in 2023. So the third thing that you might want to avoid in 2023 is low content books. So I know this might sound like a strange one to suggest that people avoid completely because these type of books are pretty easy to make and you can pretty much make them without spending much money. So things like notebooks and planners, etc., etc. And this might sound even stranger but I've actually had some pretty good sales from low content books that I have produced in the last few months. So I created this video here three months ago, as you can see, which is how I sold 115 notebooks when I was in KDP 
in 13 days, which is now updated to uh, this here from those five books I've made 652 cells. So that sounds quite good. And also one of the low content books that I uploaded back in 2019 is still selling extremely well, which has sold 1,841 copies. Again, sounds pretty good. But for me, however, the low content book scene has become a kind of a joke. And I created those notebooks, the ones that have the 600 sales, to prove a point that if you have a, a strategy for publishing your books, then you can pretty much make anything sell provided that there's traffic going to it. So the whole low content scene is a bit of a joke. Like I say, people push the idea that you can make a living from them and you can, I know people that do, but it's not the easy opportunity that it's made out to be. The barrier to entry is very, very low. So the competition for these is very, very high. So what you'll find yourself doing, and this is what most people do, is that they're always trying to find these really hidden, untapped niches, or what you're most likely fall into the trap of doing is just endlessly uploading low content books, hoping to get lucky. And the problem here is that when we do this, we just become low content book producing machines and we never really get any better at publishing because we're going to be relying so heavily on the volume aspect of it. So the low content books that I've created that you've just seen that are selling well, they have the same thoughtful process that I'd put into any book that I create. So they're high quality, there's demand going to them and I also run advertising campaigns to them as well. So if you neglect these factors, and just keep uploading as many books as possible. How can you really expect to make any sales unless you get lucky? Do you want to rely on luck? Is it gonna be worth your time to keep doing that? And the answer is no, it's probably not worth your time. So the big appeal for low content books is that they're easy to make and you don't have to spend much money on them. So what you're doing then is just relying on luck. So the luck is gonna come from uploading these books in volume. So we're talking about hundreds of books every single month. And the reality here is that most people won't get lucky. So all you're gonna be doing is wasting your life. And I've been here before where I was uploading lots of low content books and I spent four months uploading lots and lots and lots of low content books and 1% of them managed to make sales. And that was one of the books that you just saw from 2019 that's still selling. Whereas my success rate now in terms of books that are actually selling is around 80%. So you'd have to ask yourself, if you're gonna be doing the low content book thing where you're uploading books in volume, not you know not relying on advertising or marketing or anything like that you have to ask yourself is that time that it takes to sort of get lucky and find those one or two books that are going to make decent sales is that going to be worth it for you and you have to ask yourself is that pursuit where you're just uploading lots and lots of low content books is that really going to help you in the long run is it going to help you learn how to actually sell things is it going to help you to learn other aspects of making money online as well and the answer is it's probably not so that's something you really need to think about if you were thinking about creating low content books is that you will probably have to rely on volume to get them to sell so we're talking hundreds and hundreds of books okay so that's it for this video this was just a few of the things that i thought were important to note going into 2023 i've got videos coming out every single wednesday for the rest of this year and we're going to go into much more detail much more exciting topics so make sure you stay tuned and i'll see you next wednesday